speaker is State Senator, Oklahoma State Senator Nathan Dong. Nathan spent his childhood in Broken Arrow before his family moved to Romania to serve as missionaries in Eastern Europe. So having experienced socialism and the results of communism firsthand, Nathan returned to Oklahoma and got to work protecting the Constitution and individual rights. He is currently ranked the most conservative senator in Oklahoma, and guess what? It wasn't the gun rights organization that brought this nationally historical bill to the state capitol and got it passed. It was a state senator who decided to stand up. It was his idea. He took it to the gun rights organization and said, what do you think of this? So this senator is the reason. And by the way, if you get a chance, go to YouTube and Google Senator Nathan Dom debating Piers Morgan. It was hilarious. You totally just nailed him to the wall. Please welcome Senator Nathan Dom. Award of Excellence presented to Senator Nathan Dom in recognition of your exemplary voting record in advancing liberty by protecting the constitutional rights of the people of Oklahoma. From 2A women. Well, it's an honor to be with you all today. Um, it, it's an honor to serve, uh, truthfully. Uh, it is a lot of hard work. There's a lot of uh, thankless days and nights and weeks and months and years. Uh, so it is always nice to, to be honored and uh, to hear people show that appreciation for the work that we are doing. But it is absolutely a team effort. Uh, yes, this was my you know, my concept that I created, but Don Spencer and LKK were instrumental in it. Obviously, without Representative Stiegel and Florida Eccles on, on the House side getting it through, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish this. But I came into government with a little bit different perspective, having grown up overseas, uh, on the mission field, having lived in Eastern Europe, and seen the communism, the effects of communism, seeing socialism, and seeing those things. That really gave me a very unique perspective when I came back uh, to Oklahoma and started getting involved in, in government. Um, I saw that, like John has said, a lot of times it was the Republicans that were the problem with a lot of these things. And part of that is that these people don't truly understand rights. Um, in fact, that was one of the things that I told Piers Morgan when we were discussing it, is I just flat out said, the problem here is we don't understand rights. And a lot of people don't understand rights. Uh, one thing that I hear all the time at the state capitol is people are always talking about the core functions of government. We need to do roads and bridges, we need to do education, we need to do health care. They, they list off all these things, I'm sure you all have heard the same thing, as these are the core functions of government. But I always go back to our founding document, not just the Constitution, but the Declaration of Independence, because that was the founding document of this nation. There's, there's other great documents that set precedent, but that one talks about our rights. We've all heard that we're endowed by our Creator with certain rights. You've heard that, right? Among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Show of hands if you've heard that before. Please raise your hands. Okay, good. Uh, very good. Uh, but the thing is, a lot of times we just stop right there with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We don't go on. But after that, it says that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. That to secure these rights, that is the core, main, principal function of government, should be to secure our rights. Not just to build roads and bridges, not to do, just to do education. Our focus should always be, first and foremost, on protecting individual rights. So that's what my focus has been on. That's why, yes, I've worked on government transparency, I've worked on education reform, I've worked on all those other things, but I'm always focusing on protecting individual rights. So when I first started hearing about these red flag laws, started seeing that states were implementing these, and then saw that in, in Washington, D.C., in their infinite wisdom, they were going to spend more money that we don't have because our country's already broke, and they were going to try to incentivize, or what I call bribe, states into implementing these red flag laws. Oh, and by the way, those bills to fund implementing red flag laws were introduced by Republicans in mm -hmm. Congress, well-known Republicans that were advocating for this. That's when I got involved and I said, we need to do something to stop this. So I worked up the concept, worked with OK Today and others, and said, what if we just say, no red flag laws here in the state of Oklahoma, at any level of government, but also no level of government can accept any money from the federal government or any grants from any entity. Because you know Bloomberg has plenty of money that he wants to throw down. No one in the state of Oklahoma at any level of government can accept money to implement a red flag law or implement a red flag law in any way, shape, or form. Yeah! <laughs> 
It's going to be my legislation that other states will work on. I hope Arkansas is next. You all have to beat us on some other things, too. So we, we enjoy that, that camaraderie and competition on advancing rights. So hopefully this will become a national standard. Truthfully, I'll be very honest, I did not expect it to pass this year. I thought this was just a trial run to see what would happen with it. But it, without Representative Stiegel stepping up to the plate, and I'll let him share about getting it through the final hour uh, of our legislative session, without him doing that, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish this. But one thing that I'll end with, because talking about rights, and, and red flag laws do violate the majority of the Bill of Rights. They absolutely do infringe upon almost every aspect of the Bill of Rights. But one thing that is often over looked is my favorite amendment. Most people would think I'm just the Second Amendment guy, but actually my favorite amendment is the Ninth Amendment. I call it the Forgotten Amendment because people don't realize it. We talk about the Tenth Amendment and we talk about states' rights. But the problem is states don't actually have rights. Individuals have rights. Anytime it talks about the government, it talks about the powers that we have entrusted to the government. The Declaration of Independence says that, that they have the consent of the government. They have those powers that we have given to them. But the Ninth Amendment says, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage other rights. So let me say that again. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage other rights. So what they're saying is, yes, we've listed certain rights in our Constitution. But just because we have a list, that's not all encompassing. That doesn't mean those are the only rights that belong to the people. But what it says, it goes on and it says, shall not be construed. And that's very important, because we don't use that word construed in modern English anymore. But you know what that word means? It means interpreted. The Ninth Amendment literally says that, the, that it cannot be interpreted to deny or disparage other rights. That's important that we understand that, because how often have you heard that the Constitution is a living document that must be interpreted. It is not a living document. If, if our rights supersede, if they come from before the Constitution, they come from God Almighty, but they are secured by the Constitution. And the Ninth Amendment specifically says that it cannot be interpreted to deny, disparage, belittle, or take away our rights. Unfortunately, there's a lot of Officer standing up here today. Thank you, Jan, for hosting us. Thank you for 2A Women for what you are doing to stand up for your rights. These are God given rights. They, they do not belong to any race, any gender. They belong to everyone. Every individual should have the right, the God given right to self defense. Thank you for standing up and thank you for letting me stand with you.